forgot you were there. Hello and welcome back to Rally Race Guys. Probably a couple of weeks since I actually recorded, but we have actually done a lot in that time. We've got most of the stuff sent off and powder coated and back. We've now got the, uh, or Pat, on the rollover jig. We've got the MX-5 cleaned. Everything is virtually ready to go. So let me show you Pat now. So here we go. In the last couple of videos, we saw these uh, jigs. So there's one at, the, one at the front, one at the back, and they're actually connected in the middle. There you go. So they go into the chassis rails. Um, so here and here. So if you know your 205s, you know that the, uh, the way the bumper is uh, connected is through here, is through the chassis rails. And that's part of the crash structure as well. We thought it would be sound to, to actually bolt it on there. And then we've done off the bumper supports as well, but we've made a little bit of a frame it's not going anywhere so we've got two bolts there and then we've got a massive frame here it's all welded in box section that's all good at the moment still I've got the re rear beam on it still got the doors cage and boot lid on it as well today this is actually going to come out because we're going to be working on the mx5 we're actually going to change the radiator ch change the auxiliary belt and then start dealing with the rust because there's a lot of rust on this as you can see just in here focus there you go that, that's just some of it and that's just surface it same as here also we need to order the paint because we now have the blue wing which is over here uh, there you go so that's the wing to go on this side the other side is fine but we're gonna have to do a bit of a rust repair let's see if we can find it okay I'll show you that I'll show you that wing later so that's the good one on the driver's side but at the bottom, there is some um, rust repair we're going to have to do because it, it rusts out. You have a look here. So we're actually going to take the bottom section of this one here. So that where it's focused there. We're going to cut that out and then re-weld it back onto the other one because that will save us buying another wing completely. But the, the MX-5 Mark IIs are renowned for rust problems especially within the UK. You've got to protect them as best as possible. That's how we're going to revive that wing. We're also going to use that one. We've got a little bit of surface rust on the backside, which we're going to deal with, which we're going to rust treat. And then we're going to start under sealing everything with wax oil, which I'll show you now. We've got a tin of wax oil. Uh, this was just from Halfords, I believe. So we've got five litres of it. We will never have to buy another tin again because this stuff goes forever. So we'll be getting on with that. That's not a nice job at all. We will be doing that today. Although I do need to tidy up the workshop because last time we're actually at the workshop, we were creating this jig and we had a bit of a rush because it started to rain and we wanted to get the, both cars back in because it's over this side now as Ryan uh, wants to work back work on his car. So he's going to be working on his car. He wants to get painting and stuff like that. At the moment, the bench is looking very, very messy at the moment from all the fabrication that we've done over the last couple of weeks. The floor is not, not nice at all. We've got everything everywhere at the moment. I want to pull the, the MX-5 out. Then we'll pull the pat out, which is really, really easy now to move around. And we're actually going to put Pat outside, do some sweeping, do some cleaning. And then we're going to bring the MX-5 back in. We're going to change the radiator, change the coolant and the auxiliary belt. The next video that you'll see will be Rob's Mini. We're actually doing a little build series on that. So he has actually cha changed his Mini from an R35 Mini, I think, to an F56. He has now got a F56 John Cooper Works which he is in love with. He's going to keep that now. We're actually going to Deutsche Tech in Milton Keynes with the car on this Friday. So it will be the video after this one. Or oh, actually, no, there might be another one. We're going to start the build series off today, which will be the next video after this. We've got some aesthetic things to do. I think we're going to de-chrome the car. We're going to put some... It's more It's more aesthetic stuff just to, just to tie everything in together. And Rob's got all that. We're doing that today. So we want to do the MX-5 as quick as possible because then we can pull the uh, John Cooper works in 
and then we can get on with that. But we've got a bit of a mismatch of stuff today. Um, we're just trying to do everything and anything before everybody goes back to work, back to work uh, because pretty much most people are on furlough at the moment. We're trying to get as many videos out as possible. Once we've got the MX-5 done, once we've got the John Cooper works done, then we're back on Pat and we're gonna buy half a boot floor from Expressed. I'll put the, um, the, the, the link in the description. I think it's X Expressed panels or something along those lines. They're up in York. They actually produce half or a full boot floor for the 205. So even though we've done the stitch welding in it, we're actually gonna cut that out, regrind it all back and re-put one in because there has been a repair previously and we want, I'm just not happy with it. So once once that's done, and I know the other side is going as well, I don't want to faff around with it. I'd rather do it right once, once this once that's done. We're all, also today, we're gonna clean pats because as you can probably see, we've got a lot of mud that is just, there you go, look, I can pull it off with a finger and that's everywhere on the car, especially underneath. So we're gonna get Rob today with his jet wash while I'm doing the John Coop works. He's gonna actually jet wash this. As you can see in the inside the strut towers, there you go. So yeah, it's just full of mud. And I, even though I cleaned it before we brought it into the workshop a couple of years back, it's just, just still covered in mud. So now we've got all the panels off, we've got access to everything. We can now do it, and especially on this rollover jig, we can do so much more. As we've got this now, we're gonna take full advantage of it and actually do all the underneath properly, and do all the welding properly. Some bits we're actually gonna cut out and redo because I'm still not happy with it. We're gonna do it properly. Um, unfortunately, we have had to bite the bullet and uh, just sort of go, okay, yeah, that, that wasn't to the best of my abilities, so we'll do it again. Unfortunately, you can do that on metal work. Sometimes you can't, but I believe that we're gonna we're gonna give it a best shot now. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was try uh, the way I was trying to do it was hide it and look like it hadn't been repaired. But actually, I think the way I'm going to do it is make it look like it's been repaired, so people know that it's had a decent repair. And also, we've got if you have a look over there, we actually have two meters a 20 gauge deal, uh, 2.5 meters by 1.5 meters. And that was actually cheaper to buy that sheet than it was to go to eBay or anything like that. So that was from the local steel merchants as well as the box section that I used on here. And I think that came to 54 pounds. So that that's not, we got we got five meters of the box section and that massive sheet for 54 pounds. I, I, I can do everything I want and more. I can even do Rob's car if it, if it doesn't work out with cutting out the other wing. Now we're gonna pull these cars out. We're gonna give the workshop a good tidy because I never normally leave it in the state. It's normally absolutely pristine before I leave. After that, we will get on with Rob's car, do the, do the radiator, do everything. And then hopefully it'll be mechanically sound. I think we've got a, a rod end to do as well because he's already got it, so we might as well put it on. We've got to work out which one it was, because it's been a little while. And then we'll start with the rust treatment and go from there. We're gonna get the cars out and let's go. Okay, as you can see, the workshop behind me uh, is now very, very tidy. We've just got Rob's parts down here and my two steering racks to be uh, power washed. So all of that then can be power washed and ready. Uh, this has got to have some rust repair, as you can see. This was a bit I was on about earlier. Oh, so the actual mountain hull has actually got a fair amount of rust on it. We're actually going to cut that out, out of there, here. 
and take it from the one up up there so because that hasn't got any we've got mighty steering racks the inner wheel latches some more inner wheel latches front bumper so all of that's gonna be blasted um or pressure washed now we've got everything buttoned up i've been through loads of stuff i've actually spent several hours which i didn't film i just had to i just went through everything and sort of just cleaned it and there was just metal everywhere from grinding so the bench is looking all tidy now i know the head's there but ryan's just been up to inspect it he's going to be building the head for us because he that's his job he's going to do it while he's at work cleaned all under here and everything so the engine parts are back up here now everything's wrapped up ready ready to be reassembled rear beams off the car now so the actual Peugeot is outside now which I'll show you in a second now we're gonna get the MX-5 in change the radiator do the cooler and the auxiliary belt We're going to take the radiator out and while we're there we're going to uh, do the auxiliary belt as well because we have got access to it we might as well do it. We know it's squeaky as well so um, we want to eliminate the squeak so we'll do that as well. We've got two bolts here, we've got a hose clamp and I believe it will just pop up. We have got some wiring for the fan which is just a top clip but we all will also take this intake pipe in off as well to give us a little bit more room so we're not having any other issues these two bolts it's a simple 14 mil and we've got it on a 3 8 ratchet for the intake hose we're going to use a 10 millimeter i've just got an extension on this one lift it up and over there is a breather off the top of the valve cover um, but we don't need to touch that so here we've got the top hose and also right at the bottom we've got the bottom hose so now this is actually floating in theory yep you just pull up next thing to do is undo the wiring and then we're going to take the under tray off release the cap I've already checked there's, there is no coolant in this because it's been sat for so long there is no coolant in the header tank which is this pipe here, release this. Uh, we've got water at the top, so that's fine, but we will take it off. Next thing will be the fan wiring. Once we've done that, under tray off, and then get a, a tray underneath it to catch all the water, because there's gonna be a lot of water in here. And we're going to take the other clips off. We've got the breather attached to here, so we've just popped this over here. It doesn't matter, it's a very, fairly decent hose, so it'll bend. Here is the plug. Um, let me just get the light out of the light. So here is the plug for the fan. Quickly, simply pull and pull up. There's nothing else to be worried about. We're gonna get some pliers to take this, uh, this cable off. Uh, this is snapped already. Once this is out, then we'll do the under tray, which is down there. And then the bottom hose, which is right at the bottom, which you can't see. Um, Which is there so it's fairly easy with the bumper off and stuff you can do it without the without the bumper being off but we, it just makes it easier best thing for this clip here is a pair of just um, long nose pliers and then we're gonna we're just gonna squeeze it and then we won't break it so let me just set the camera down simple so now we're going to tuck this over there, so this is all ready to come out, now we're going to do the under tray. For the under tray, uh, we've got one bolt there, we've got another bolt there, and we've got another bolt there. We also have, you're meant to have a couple at the sides, uh, there, up here, but fortunately they're rusted, they're either rusted or the tabs are broken, so all we've got is one and one under there and one under there so we've only actually got five bolts for this for this car and there will be 10 mils as well
So as you can see now, it's exposed the bottom hose. So we're just going to get a tray, unclip this and twist it off. So I've just switched to some bigger ones because this seems to have rusted. Just to twist it. We're going to let that drain, as you can see, I'm covered in water and that clamp is it's still good, but it is rusted, so be careful. We're just going to let that drain. We're going to pick the other end of the radiator up so we get more the, all the water up. So as that's draining, if you ever wanted to do a thermostat, it, it's just in here, so it will just be two 12mm bolts. So now we're going to take this top hose off and then we're going to take this hose off as well and it will just pull up. You will still get water coming out of it. The reason we took this off is because it can hold pressure and it can glug and it'll also make more of a mess. So if you take this off, it'll just come out nicely like it did. Yes, yes it went all over my hands, but that's the name of the game when you're doing this sort of stuff. Just to show you, it's quite hard to film and do the job at once. It's good. Yeah, just twist, simple. Don't usually recommend doing this because you can puncture the um, the top hose, but if you just need to loosen it, just so we get some wiggle room, just so we can pull it off. Just like that. Oh, we've got some in there as well. So we'll pull it off this end. There you go, it's simple. I already know there's, no in, there's none in the coolant reservoir. So, simple as. That's the old one out, and we've got a new, a new one in this box. It's from Nissan, or Nissan's. We're just gonna open it now, and we'll show you the difference and why you want to uh, change it. Oh, so we're going to check all the fittings and everything just to make sure that they are the same before we throw this one away because there is a possibility that they are different. To show you the difference between an old one, as you can see, it, if I do this, it literally just flakes away. So yeah, that's not good. But we've got a really efficient one here. Same thickness, everything. The, only, uh, the first things I can spot are these, these here, so uh, we might have to get some block offs. I have just double checked these, uh, this is something different, so we're not even going to worry about plumbing these, but I have just checked it with water, uh, so it's this and this one, two brass fittings. I don't know why they're there, there's no instructions with it, so I'm going to leave them be. I've just put it water in it, nothing comes out of them, I have blown into them, my f f uh, f thumb over the other one, and it doesn't seem to be connected to the system. So it must be something to do with the air conditioning unit or something uh, that could potentially be here, but this car doesn't have it. Now it's on to auxiliary belts. So actually we have two. So we have the alternator and power steering. Work out which is which. I've got two, so we if we have both, then they, that would be great. Here we have a tensioner here, and also we'll have a tensioner back here on the alternator. We don't want to move anything, we just want to untension the belt. For belts, you should have about a half a twist. That's the right tension. That's what we've got at the moment. This tensioner one and the bottom one are both 12 mil. We're using the 12 mil with, on a 3 8 Okay, so this will ten untension the belt. As you can see, we can get more flex into that. All we do is push this down and then the belt will come off. Perfect. So there's one off. These are Euro car part specials. This looks about the same, which yeah, it does. We're visually checking and we've got a other one as well, which we'll just double check 
which looks like the alternator belt, which is the same thickness and the same thickness. But we'll just double check on this one. So they're both roughly the same. 860, this one is uh, 885. So we're going to use the 860 with the 860, which is 4PK860, 4AP60. I've just realised that you have to do the other one as well as this one because you uh, unfortunately won't be able to get this belt off. Okay. There you go. And then we're just going to double check this one. 885. And we need the 885. Same exact way we put them on. Took them off, sorry. And then we'll put it back on. Well, that was one belt. That took far longer than it should have done. But here we are. We're going to retension the alternator and retension the power steering. Okay, so that's the auxiliary belts done. We're now going to swap over the fan onto the new radiator and then we'll uh, swap the rubbers over as well, but top and bottom, and then we'll be ready to put it back on. These, these are also 10 mil. It blows in air at the rate that you're, go <laughs> at the rate that you're going, and not any fast. Yeah, that'll be it, mate. No, it doesn't matter. You'll know. It means that when you like going age, you get a nice cool brew, but when you're not. <laughs> Quality, mate. Okay, so it's only 210 mils and it just pops in. Uh, also, we need the top hat rubbers to go on here. You might need uh, just a flat blade screwdriver just to pop them off. Just simply out like that. Then simply push them on to the next one. Have we got any on the bottom? Yes, we do. So, we've got two on the bottom as well. Two. Simple. Okay. So, all we do is as reverse. Make sure it's seated. And then we're gonna do, we're actually gonna pop the top ones in first. A little bit of trouble with the bottom hose, but uh, that was only because of uh, uh, this uh, spring jubilee clip is no longer. It's even though it looks okay, it just isn't performing well. So I put a nice stainless steel banded one on, which these they're smooth inside, so they'll never put serrations in. So you'll never get a failure point from there. So these are a lot better. They're more expensive. Um, but they are called zero clips. They're not jubilee clips, but they're zero clips and these are so much better and they'll never rust because they're stainless. Fortunately, it was from my stash for my car, so um, it is what it is. Now it is time to fill it up with water. We're gonna do water first, just in case we've got any leaks. First things first, we're gonna re-put this back on because we we're gonna have to warm the car up and it won't like it when the mass airflow meter isn't running. 
We're actually going to film through here and then uh, we're going to let the uh, system bleed. We have got triple QX Euro Cup Arch Special. I don't know how much it is, for, but we're going for summer because this car is mainly going to be used in summer. Now we've got up to full up here. Now we need to turn the car on, get the water system going and then start bleeding it from there. Because this is the highest point, we always bleed from here. And also I'll mix the water and the coolant together. We're just going to open the door slightly so we don't uh, give ourselves carbon monoxide poisoning and move everything off that can potentially fall off the car. Unfortunately the camera died halfway through the ending shot. We actually, we bled the radiator so it's all good. All of it's on uh, back up and running. So we haven't put the under tray back on because we're going to have to do some under seating anyway. So it's pointless doing that. Rob behind the camera has uh, test drove it and he said it feels a lot better and it's a bit more sprightly. Everything's ready. We're, we're good and mechanically now. Under seal and then bodywork and then he can be on his way. Um, but yeah, if you like this, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, thank you for watching. If you've got any um, comments or uh, questions, just drop them in the uh, comment section and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. But Rob has cleaned this today, haven't you? Mm-hmm. So yep. all underneath is all done now. If you come and have a Got look. rid of all of the mud that was caking the bottom of this. So also all the uh, wheel arch um, liners, they're all done now. All of the under tray, the wing, and the bumper has all been done. So all of that is ready to go back on the car when we're ready to do so. Um, but as you can see, uh, it's a lot, looking a lot better now as from the earlier shot. But yeah, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.